Welcome to our spatial learning video series, where we'll use the power of spatial computing technology to take learning to the next level. Wherever you are, we're excited to go beyond your TV, textbook, or computer screen and blend learning experiences into our physical world together. Alex here again. Hey. And today, we're going to go on a virtual field trip. We're going to get the opportunity to travel to a number of different museums right from our homes. With the power of spatial learning, using a really exciting application called BBC Civilizations from Nexus Studios, we can bring ancient artifacts from many different places all around the world together and get a chance to learn about them. For this particular experience, we're going to learn about masks, masks that people wore in many different countries, many different areas all around the world over thousands of years. We're going to get to learn a few facts about each of them on their own, and then we're going to look at them all together and think about how they compare and how they contrast. Let's get started. As you guys can see, we've got one mask over here, another one over here, another one over here, here, and lastly, over here. I've arranged these masks chronologically. That means from when they were made in terms of how long ago they were, starting with this one, which is a Corinthian helmet. Corinth was an area of ancient Greece, which is over in Europe. And this helmet here was made for battle. A soldier would wear this and bring it in for a major battle that might have happened hundreds and hundreds of years ago. To be specific, this actually would have come way back in roughly 500 to 600 BC. That means 2,500 years ago, a super long time ago. But a really cool thing that we can do with spatial learning is see what it would have looked like all that time ago. Because if we get close, we can tell that it's worn down. A lot of the material has rusted. But we can do something called restoring it using this cool magnifying glass. If I pick it up, we see above it, restored Corinthian helmet. And what do we think it looks like? Wow much shinier, probably made of copper, and we get to see how it would have looked 2,500 years ago versus right now. Really amazing stuff. Let's move on now to this one, which is a gold mummy mask from the year 80 or 120 AD. That means it was over 500 years after this mask, but over 2,000 years from where we are now, super long time ago. Now, the cool thing about this mask is it was made in Egypt, but as we see, it was in the Roman period. What that means is that the ancient Romans a group from Europe, today Italy, who had conquered Egypt. And a guy named Titus was the emperor, and he really, really loved ancient Egyptian culture. So he actually had this mask made for him after the ancient Egyptian style. And we can see the ancient Egyptian gods over here. It was very, very elaborate with lots of cool stuff going on here. So even though we usually think about these mummy masks as by Egyptians for Egyptians, this particular case was made in Egypt, but for a Roman emperor. Really cool stuff. Let's move on now to this trophy head, which is hundreds and hundreds of years after the mummy mask. This was actually made in Africa, so the same continent as the mummy mask, but actually in a different area called Ghana, which is in West Africa. And the exciting thing here is that this is only a few hundred years ago, but we can see 
that it's very different from the type of stuff that we would look at today. It was made by a group called the Ashanti, and it was made out of gold. We can tell by the color. And the reason it was made out of gold is because this tribe in this area had a lot of access to gold. And they would put these together after they beat one of their enemies. So they would have this trophy head and then a sword next to it. And it represented their victories in battle. If we now go 100 years later, we're going to find this really cool named mask called Nukhmal. And even though this doesn't look like something we would see near our homes, it actually is a mask from a Native American tribe back in the 19th century, which is the 1800s, only a little bit more than 200 years ago. And we can see that it's got some markings on the face, it's got this piece under the tongue, and it was made by a tribe that has a really funny name, the Kuwakuwaku. And they're actually up in what today is Canada. This mask was not used for battle, like the one over here from ancient Greece, or to represent conquest like this one, but actually made to police their own tribe. Somebody would wear this and make sure that everybody in the tribe was sticking to tradition all of the things that they believed in for all of the years that they were together as a tribe. The last one that we'll go to is here, an open work head by a gentleman named Henry Moore. And this is really recent, 1950, only about 70 years ago. And we can see that it's very, very different than the other ones before it. And the idea here was to represent the way in which soldiers from World War II might have had masks, and also to use materials from the very, very focused efforts of building at this time and rebuilding too. It was from England, which is over in Europe. And that's the last mask that we'll look at today. And if we step back, we see that over 2,000 years, Masks have changed a whole lot and have served many different purposes. So even though they're all similar, they're also very, very different. And we had a chance now to get to learn about them all together in the comfort of our own homes, even if they live in museums all around the world through the power of spatial computing technology here. That's all for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this virtual field trip. We'll do another one soon. Bye.